because our other choice is terrible. He's, there's no way that he's going to bring to you the idealism that you hope for. And so you see where I stand. And I believe, I definitely believe that there is room for all of us under the same tent. And uh, that's my speech. Did you want me to entertain the four questions at this moment? Uh, no. Okay, thank you, Barry. Hi there. It is Gay Ann DeMordaunt, oh, and sorry. I can tell no problem, Phil. And I can tell you it's a mouthful any way you slice it up, so no problem. I have people that have known me for ten years that uh, still can't say my name, and I had to look at it carefully when I was first married every time I signed a check. So um, I you know, it is so great to be with you guys tonight. Um, it, we couldn't be in a prettier spot. Uh, you know, with the river behind us, the waterfalls. I have to say, as I was coming out here tonight, um, I, I was, uh, every time I, you know, looked up, there was something, something beautiful to see, and I kind of kept veering off, and I had actually someone honk at me from behind, because I kept slowing down. It's just a beautiful drive out here. You know, um, I, I couldn't agree more with, with Barry, you know, in terms of articulating where we are as a society, you know, we are, in general, we've become an entitlement society. And, you know, I think that that starts at a very young age. I would say that uh, in our school system, systems today, that idea is perpetuated, that we are an entitlement society, that we don't have to work for what we have, that for some reason we deserve the A on the paper, whether we've done the work or not. And I think that, sorry, um, and I think that starts at a young age, and I think in part that is is because of our education system, you know, and and very certain certainly addressed what is happening nationally, and you know, in terms of our national politics, we don't have the we don't have the luxury of complacency of complacency anymore. You know, we can't sit on the sidelines anymore. Um, it's, it's become dangerous, it really has, in terms of our personal freedoms, in terms of our liberties, in terms of our lands. Um, you know, certainly we see that in Idaho, and, and I guess I would say in terms of our children as well. You know, I've spent a great deal of time um, working on education reform in the state, and um, I guess that I, I think that change can happen at a very young age, and we need to be able to control and influence the hearts and minds of our children. And, and in my mind, I guess we have a national teachers union, a state teachers union. We have those hearts and minds, when we send them off to school, do not belong to us anymore. The parents have been taken out of the driver's seat. And, and we need to be put back in the driver's seat so we control the hearts and minds of our children. You know, um, again, nationally, we look at needing to be engaged in, in the fight to, to oust uh, President Hussein, uh, Barack Hussein Obama. <laughs> I put that Hussein in there. Um, you know, we, we have got to be, every one of us, um, has got to be engaged in, in that fight. And certainly, you know, as a party and as the chairman, um, I would put time and energy and effort and organization, you know, looking at that national, how we can affect that um, election. But we have big issues here at home as well. And one of the biggest issues is are the referendums, the three education referendums that are going to be on the ballot. Now, let me tell you why I think this is important. You may not have a student, a child, a grandchild uh, that is sitting in a seat today. Um, and, and, and you may not care, you may not be engaged and concerned about the actual education or the curriculum. Um, but this referendum is more than just about that student that's sitting in the seat. If we don't have students that are work ready and college ready coming out of uh, our high schools, 
then, then it affects our economy. We can't attract business. We can't grow business. We spend time in our colleges with remediation. We've got to be able to, if we want to keep our kids here, if we want to keep jobs here, if we want to attract business, we've got to have work ready and college ready students coming out of our school system. And that is not the case right now. So if you don't care about the students in the seat, then you need to care about the implication to the economy and to business. And if you don't care about that, then you need to care about a national union, the largest and most influential uh, national union coming in here, dropping a whole lot of money um, in order to determine or to buy an outcome in Idaho. You know, if it's, if it's not your issue now in terms of education and economy and jobs, then it's going to be your issue next time around on the ballot. And here's the thing, if we don't send the message nationally that Idaho is not for sale, that there's not a price tag on Idaho, that you can't come in here as a, as a large union and buy our votes, then again, the next time, the next issue, it may be yours. We need to send that message loud and clear. There will be national attention on this. It'll be similar to Wisconsin. And I believe that, you know, there's a lot of people around the nation that are already plugged in that know what is going on here in Idaho in terms of education. You know, we have a governor and a state superintendent that has looked that national union in the eye and has not blinked. And it is important, it's imperative really, that we make sure that those referendums are passed. So we have something on the state ballot and we have something in terms of the national election that we just need to be engaged in. And I think that, you know, we, again, we don't have time or the luxury to be sitting on the sidelines this time around. You know, as I look around and as I think about those that, that I've served with in the party, and I, I will admit, I have not been around as long as Barry. He likes to point out that I'm a kid. I'm a 46-year-old kid, and I, I, I really said to him, I wish you'd just call me every, you know, every day, and when I'm waking up, and someone would say, you're too young. <laughs> you know, I'd like to be considered too young. I've got three kids in college. I, I, I would really like to be considered too young. But, um, you know, I just, I, I think that we really um, have to be engaged now, and it's, um, you know, I have organized on a state level, and I think that we are going to have to have boots on the ground in every corner of our state to make sure that we, that we can pass these referendums. And like I said, it's not a matter of only education, it's a matter of jobs, and it's a matter of letting the union know that Idahoans are not for sale, and we will, be, we will determine our own destiny. You know, Idahoans in general, I like to think of it this way, you know, we, there's a maverick spirit here in Idaho, and we have our own brand of Republican Party, okay? We do. You know, it's different than Republican parties in other states. You know, we've got that independent spirit. We like to walk to the beat of our own drummer, right? But... You know, and there's real, there's real uh, strength in individualism, and we need to celebrate individualism. But at the end of the day, that strength can, can be brought together so that we can defeat Obama, we can replace, you know, this, I hate to use the word tyrant, but really in terms of, of the policies that he has, that have come out of the White House, you know, they have in, impeded our own personal freedoms, they have impeded the growth of an economy, an opportunity, and we have to send him packing. And that can only happen if we, in our individualism, with bring those strengths together and move forward together. So I, I think that in terms of defeating these, ref or passing these referendums and sending that message nationally, not only to Obama, but to other national organiz organizations that that we are strong, that we are individuals, and, and there's great strength in that, that the maverick spirit of Idahoans is alive and kicking. Thanks very much. Thanks, Deanne. I, I felt a little bit better when she uh, 
screwed up President Obama saying, but you know, that's easy to do because he goes by multiple names and uh, has used multiple social security numbers and, uh, and allegedly has multiple birth certificates. Which, which reminds me of a joke. What, what two things do God and President Obama have in common? Maybe you've heard this. Uh, both of them think they're God, and uh, neither one has birth certificate. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna we're gonna uh, hear from both uh, uh, Barry and Gay Ann at the same time, and, and I just have a few questions. These are simple questions, and I know one thing that is sort of uh, um, makes one apprehensive when they're a candidate is, is you don't know what questions are gonna get fired at you. But these are really uh, basic, and I, you both have an opinion on them. So why don't you each take about a minute to a minute and a half to answer each one, and we'll pass the mic back and forth, and we'll, we'll start with uh, Gay Ann. And the first question is, what will your main priority be as, as chairman of the Idaho Republican Party? Thanks, Bill. Um, you know, I think that um, in, in terms of my main priority, you know, I think that we have two kinds of, of capital, basically, in the party. We have manpower, and we have money. And in order to accomplish what we need, we need to grow both of those, and we need to spend both of those wisely and, and effectively. And I think that, you know, my priority really will be, first of all, we have got to engage everyone. And, you know, I, I have a sense that, um, you know, not everyone has felt equally valued as part of, of the Republican team. That, that might be an understatement here. Um, and, and I think that, you know, we, we have to value every individual and every individual needs to, to be um, involved and engaged. And here's the thing, you know, I, I think that we can raise a lot of money and, and certainly that will be a priority, but we have to raise that manpower capital as well. And that manpower capital is really you. It's boots on the ground, it's grassroots, it's, it's you know, sending the emails, knocking the doors, and making sure that you know, we get our message out. Um, a message that says limited government, it says free market, the free market has to work. We, we have to make sure that these ideals are you know, hitting every doorstep, every, every email, Every person understands that that is how we fix the economy. That's how we fix what is broken in Washington and, and what needs to be fixed here in Idaho. So I, I guess I would say, you know, it, that manpower, that investment in manpower, making sure people are engaged. And, and then, you know, financially, we've, we've got to have money in the party. We've, we've operated on a shoestring, you know, for, for a long time. And um, that, that has to be a priority in order to um, you know, defeat referendums, to defeat Barack Obama. It's got to be about organization and execution. So I think those are two priorities for me. And certainly, you know, a third priority would be, you know, I think that we, we all want to be, feel valued, our opinions. You know, there's, there are so many different um, uh, opinions in this party, and that's great. We ought to be celebrating those differences. We shouldn't be afraid of having dialogues. These these platform committees and resolution committees, you know, we just we we need not be fearful about having good debate and dialogue. We should be comfortable and celebrate those differences. And again, a large tent, everyone should be respected. And so I would say that another priority is just increasing that respect. Um, for one another. Thanks, Beth. Very. Thank you, Phil. <clears throat> Excuse me. The, my feelings about the party are this. It's amazing to me how far the party has come along in a relatively short number of time, short amount of time, to strengthening the party from the bottom up. I can remember clearly when there were times when we searched out people run as precinct committeemen in each of the county central committees. It was a difficult thing to find. One of the great blessings that came to the state organization was when Mr. Ron Paul ran for president and excited a large population of our state. And many of you 
came and ran as precinct committeeman and became actively involved in your central committee. In, in doing that, you have had a significant influence on the conservative impact of the party. I believe it to, a to be a blessing to all of us. As, as I, uh, if I get the opportunity to serve as chairman of the state party, I'm keenly aware that I, do not, that I do not have all the talents to cover all of the bases. At the same time, I'm keenly aware that within our ranks, are those who have talents that will make a great team. And unitedly, whether we're talking about the state chairman, the executive committee, the region, or the county, unitedly, we are strengthening, our, we are strengthening ourselves. You guys have had a significant impact again. Me personally, I'm grateful for it. And if I get this chairmanship, we will work towards more strength. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. All right, so, so I can read my notes by the time this evening's over. We're going to speed it up a little bit. Um, and so we're going to take about uh, 90 seconds to answer each question. We'll start with Barry next. Uh, what would be your approach to fundraising? 90 seconds. Well, you can only hope that Representative Phil Hart opens his pocket. <laughs> You know, it's interesting to me, there's 